Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are in session number four. Just like a uh, blink of the eyes, we are in the last session for this week. We are in session number four, so in this case, we are going to end the first week today. So we are going to continue with the work that we were doing yesterday, and we are going to talk about some expressions related to the topic that we were talking about yesterday. If you can remember, yesterday we were talking about the count and noun count nouns. And in a moment, we were talking about some expressions that we can use when we are talking about these uh, nouns. Because they are very, very um, important in English. So in that case, we were saying that we have the quantifiers and I was explaining something about that expressions that we use in English, but in this case, we are going to talk about the express uh, or expression of quantity. That is the topic that we are going to develop because uh, we need to use those expressions to help us to understand uh, how much or how many things do we have. Vamos a hablar de lo que son las expresiones de cantidad que ayer mencionábamos un poco sobre esas expresiones que nos ayudan a nosotros a entender mejor cuánto tenemos de una cosa, ya sea en un nombre contable o en un nombre no contable. So, in that case, we're going to begin with the topic because we have uh, some words that we need to know. We have uh, some examples, and then we are going to develop other topic. Then, in that case, we are going to have like two topics. One is the expressions of quantity, and in the other a uh, topic is indirect question. Vamos a ver lo que son las expresiones de cantidad, y también vamos a ver lo que son las preguntas indirectas, cómo se formulan, para qué las necesitamos, y eh, ¿Cómo podemos eh, responder a esas preguntas? We are going to start with the topic number one. And today is December 8. Topic. Expressions of quantity that is the first one. Let me take this one here. Okay. So it says that there are many phrases uh, used to express quantities and amounts in English. In general, much and many are the standard quantifiers used to express large quantities. Which expression you use will often depend on whether the noun is countable or uncountable and whether the sentence is negative or positive. Uh, we have two very, very common uh, words that we can use for um, this topic that is much and many. But now we are going to know more words that we can use to uh, talk about uh, quantities. And also we are going to see uh, what words we can use with positive and negative expressions. And in this case, we are not talking about the structures because in that case it is not related to the structure. It's more like the context of the words that make them positive or negative. 
So we are going to begin with the uh, general information about the expressions, and then we are going to see what are those words, and also we are going to see some examples of those words. So this is the most general idea about the expressions of quantity. And it says also that while much and many are among the most common, the following expressions are often used in place of much and many, especially in positive sentence. And we have a lot of, lot of, plenty of, a great deal of, and a large number of. So in that case, we can use other expressions to say almost the same thing or to uh, talk about the same uh, quantities. But in that case, it's just to make it different, to have uh, more options to express those uh, quantities. And in this case, remember that we are going to use these expressions with a positive sentence. And we have here the words. The first one is a lot of. Lots of, plenty of, great deal of, and a large number of. These expressions can um, can be combined with of in the sentence of most, many, or much. In this case, we have some examples. We have the first one, and it says, a lot of people enjoy listening to jazz. 
a lot of people enjoy listening jazz. And in this case, we have here of, that is the combination. In this case, we are going to use of, and we are going to use the expression that in this case, we have at the end of uh, those expressions, the of. So in this case, it's a combination of this expression and of to complete the sentence. In this case, it's um, replacing many, for example. Many people enjoy listening jazz. Muchas personas disfrutan escuchar jazz. And in this case, a lot of people, muchas personas, eh, disfrutan escuchar jazz. It's like uh, that we can change a little bit the words, but at the end is the same thing because we are expressing that a lot of people, many people, uh, a great amount of people enjoy listening to jazz. Then we have another example, and it says, A great deal of time is spent. Is spent understanding. this issue. So in this case, we have again this one, and it says a great deal of time is spent understanding this issue. Una gran cantidad de tiempo es pasado entendiendo estas cuestiones, estos problemas, estas situaciones. Then, it says that much, must, and many don't take off. In that case, when you are replacing must, much, and many, we are not going to use of. In this case, when you are going to use of, it's when you are replacing, um, like, a combination. But in this case, when you are going to use Another one, you are not going to use the must, uh, I mean the of. So in some cases, you are going to use it, but in other, you are not going to use of in the expression. And in this case, we have one example. Most people enjoy listening to some type of music. In this case, it, uh, it is not must of. It is not like in the, in the first one, a lot of. In this case, when you are going to use must, uh, the word must, you are not going to use of. Si tenemos nosotros en lugar, eh, o cuando reemplazamos más, much, en many, o sea, no vamos a utilizar esas tres expresiones, sino que vamos a utilizar eh, a lot of, lots of, plenty of, a great deal of, a large number of, lo vamos a poner el of siempre después de la expresión que nosotros estamos utilizando. Pero en el lugar de utilizar um, much, must, and many, utilizando esas tres expresiones en las oraciones, no le vamos a agregar el of. Much, or many, or must, people. In that case, when you use the expression must, many, and, mm, and much, it is not necessary to add the of. Si utilizamos esas expresiones, le agregamos of, Pero si utilizamos much, many, and most, no vamos a utilizar el of. And we have the example. Most people enjoy listening to some type. of music. The other one is much time. Much time is spent understanding 
mass. <clears throat> we are using almost the same sentences, but changing the expression. So in that case, uh, it is not necessary to add the complete form of the other expressions because you are telling that most people enjoy listening to some type of music. Muchas personas eh, disfrutan escuchar algún tipo de música. And in the other one, much time is spent understanding math. Mucho tiempo es gastado en entender matemáticas. Then we have the expression much. That is one of, eh, I think that this one is very eh, used in English when we are talking about eh, quantities because it's very, very understandable to use this word. Much is used in or with uncountable nouns. Vamos a utilizar much con nombres no contables. Siempre lo vamos a utilizar con nombres no contables. And we have some examples. The first one said, there is much interest in learning. There is much interest in learning. In this case, we're talking about something that we can touch um, because interest is an abstract idea. So in that case, it's something uncountable. And in that case, we are going to use much. Then we have English. I mean, how much money do you have? How much money do you have? Again, money is uncountable because in that case, we are talking about like not something physical it's like uh, an amount so in that case we cannot have it in a countable noun el dinero se cuenta de una manera diferente lo contamos por cantidades no por eh, cuántos billetes tenemos eso sería preguntar how many um, coins do you have cuántos cuántas monedas tienes and in that case it's a countable noun because you are going to say Oh, I have 10 coins, or I have 20 coins. But when you are talking about money, you can say, oh, I have $20, and $100, and it is not talking about the amount of a paper of coins that you have. In that case, it's the amount of money. So in this case, it's an uncountable noun. Another one, there isn't much butter left in the refrigerator. Also, we can use much with a negative sentence. And also, we can use it in questions. And we have two examples. How much money do you have? <clears throat> and the second one, there isn't much rice left.
it says that uh, much is rarely used in the positive form. English speakers generally use a lot of or lots of with uncountable nouns. In that case, when we are learning English, we can use um, a lot of expressions that we find um, like better for us because they are easier to understand. But in some cases, the native speaker didn't use that kind of expressions to say something. In this case, much is more for a negative a sentence and for questions because they use a lot of or a lot of. So in that case, it is not like you cannot use much for positive sentences. You can do it, but it is depending on your um, decision. It is not like uh, there are a rule in which you are not going to use that expression to positive sentences. It is based on what you do want to say and in the way you are trying to express that idea. Así que es más común escuchar a personas que hablan inglés decir a lot of o lots of en lugar de much con las oraciones positivas. Ellos más que todo lo utilizan en preguntas y en oraciones negativas. For example, they, they say, we have a lot of time. We have a lot of time instead of we have much time. And, it's, and in that case, we can say, oh, it is true because we can hear that expression a lot. And also, it's another example, there is a lot of wine in the bottle, not there is much wine in the bottle. So in that case, it is like preference. Then we have many, that is the other expression that we have. Many. And it says that many is used with countable nouns. Much is for uncountable nouns and many is for countable nouns. And we have some examples of this. How many people came to the party? How many people came to the party? There are many apples on the table. In this case, it's, uh, many is used in a positive sentence. It is not like in the same case with much. In this case, many, it is used in a positive sentences. And it's like the best way to use it. And we have another example of that. It says, Andrew has a lot of friends. And in that case, um, we can say also, Andrew has many friends. And we have another expression, a lot of my friends live in New York. But we can say, many of my friends live in, in New York. So it is, um, we have that uh, expressions and the variety of words that we can use to express the same idea. Another expression, Expression or quantity is a lot of, lot of, plenty of. And it says that a lot of and lots of can be used with both countable and uncountable nouns. A lot of and lots of are used in positive sentences. Estas pueden ser utilizadas 
eh, a lot of o lots of pueden ser utilizadas con los dos, con nombres contables y nombres no contables y también en oraciones positivas. We have some examples, and we have the first one. There is a lot of water in that jar. Second one, he's got lots of friends in London. And it says that in in general speaking, let of sounds less formal than a let of. In that case, when we are using a formal way to say something, we need to say a let of instead of let of, because in that case, it is more informal. Then we have another one that is a little or a few. It says that a letter and a few indicate a quantity or number. Use a letter with uncountable nouns. And we have an example. There is a little wine in that bottle. There is a little sugar in my coffee. And then we say that we are going to use few with countable nouns. He has a few friends in New York. We bought a few sandwiches on our way to the park. Then we have little or few. In this case, it's not like a little or a few. It's later and few. 
that in this case, when you are not going to use the A at the beginning, you are indicating a limited quantity. It's kind of different from the other expressions because a letter and a few indicates a quantity or number. And in this case, liter and few indicate a limited quantity. And it says, use a liter, in this case, use a liter with uncountable nouns. And we have here, I have little money to spend. Then we have, she found a little time for work. Then we know that we are going to use few with countable nouns. He has few students in his class. Then Jack finds few reasons to stay. We're going to see um, three more expressions, and then we're going to have like a um, uh, short exercise because we are going to have a lot of expressions of quantity, but in this case, we're going to see three more, and then we're going to have an exercise related to this topic. And then we are going to see a little bit about the other topic that we have for today. Then we have some. But in this case, we say that use some in positive sentence when there is neither a lot nor a little. And some can be used with both countable and uncountable nouns. And in this case, utilizamos some. En oraciones positivas, cuando no hay ni mucho ni poco. Es como una parte intermedia. Y puede ser utilizado con ambos, con los nombres contables y con los nombres no contables. Then we have some examples. We have some friends who work in Los Angeles. Then we have any. 
So in this case, it's for questions. Use any in questions to ask if someone has something. Any can be used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Then we have a question here. Do you have any friends in San Francisco? And is there any pasta left? In this case, when we are offering or requesting something, we are going to use some instead of any. Cuando estamos pidiendo algo o cuando estamos eh, ofreciendo algo, no vamos a utilizar any, sino que vamos a utilizar el some en ese caso, cuando sea de dar o de recibir. And in this case, or the reason is, when you are asking or requesting something or offering something, uh, you need to be very polite. So in that case, when you change um, any for some, you are sounding more polite. Estamos siendo más respetuosos, sonamos más respetuosos y más serios o formales cuando utilizamos el some en lugar de any cuando ofrecemos o pedimos. Would you like some shrimp? Would you like some shrimp? And in this case, we're asking someone if they like to have more shrimp. And in that case, we are offering. This is an offer. And in the second one, would you lend me some money? Would you lend me some money? We are asking or requesting something. Okay. We have different expressions of quantity that we can use to create sentence. We have many. We have a lot of, lots of, plenty of. We have a little, a few, little, few, some, any. Using those expressions, we are going to create two sentences. And you are going to write those sentences on the chat here in Zoom. So you need to write two sentences using those expressions that we have on the document. And I'm going to write a list of sentences that you are going to write. Así que vamos a escribir una, dos oraciones utilizando estas expresiones que ya estamos viendo eh, sobre cantidad. Las van a escribir en el chat de, acá de la sesión y yo voy a ir escribiendo la lista de oraciones que ustedes vayan escribiendo. When you have your sentence, you can write it on the chat.
Okay, I have some sentences. I'm going to write it here. The first one, do you like eat some vegetables? In this case, we're going to change something of that question. Would you like to eat some vegetables? Yes, I did change the, the questions. Okay, thank you. Then we have another one. Let's go have some fun. I have some troubles in my work. Then we have, I've never heard of any of these artists. Some people are very smart. Would you like to read some books? I'm going to give you two more minutes to write a sentence. Do you have any beans? Beans in your house. Beans. Beans like frijoles. Would you like to watch horror movies? Some, in that case. <laughs> Don't worry.
I have some family in Guatemala. I have a lot of apples. Samantha, search, a few, about, global warming. Okay, we have some uh, sentences uh, using those expressions that you have on the document uh, related to quantity. And we have the first one, would you like to eat some vegetables? Let's go have some fun. I have some troubles at work. I never hear of any of these others. Some people are very smart. Would you like to read some books? I will be out for a few hours tomorrow. Did you have any beans in your house? Would you like to watch some horror movies? I have some family in Guatemala. I have a lot of apples. Samantha search for a little research about global warming. Okay, thank you for your participation. And, and now we are going to see because we have like eight minutes or okay i'm back again Okay, the second topic that we have for today is um, indirect questions. These are a type of question in which we can um, ask for details, something like that. But let me put here the topic. We have an example here. We have like a conversation. And we say, for example, um, the conversation is between me and a person that I meet in the street. And I need to know something. I need to have some information. And I said, excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest station is? Excuse me. Could you tell me where the nearest station is? And the person in the street uh, answered, Certainly, it's along that road on the right. Certainly, it's along that road on the right. And I said, Thank you. And do you know if there is a supermarket near here? Thank you. And do you know if there is a supermarket near here? Yes, there is one next to the station. Yes, there is one next to the station. And I said, thank you very much for your help. In this case, 
we are using the indirect questions when we are asking for help in the street because they are very polite. Indirect questions start with a phrase like, could you tell me, or do you know, for example. Las preguntas indirectas son aquellas que nosotros le hacemos a alguien que acabamos de conocer, alguien con el que no tenemos confianza, pero que necesitamos obtener algún tipo de información. Son bastante formales, bastante eh, con un tono bastante respetuoso, porque necesitamos información sobre algo y no simplemente vamos a llegar y decirle, tell me where is the station, because it is some very unpolite, and maybe people is not like, they are not going to tell us anything because we are not asking in a polite way. In the another question, uh, we put the verb is after the subject, the bank, in the same way as I do with a normal positive sentence. The bank is over there. But in the direct question, I put the verb is before the subject, the bank. This is called inversion. We have a lot of different things. Uh, we need to change something on the question because it is going to sound different. To make a uh, indirect yes, no question, we use if and the word order of a normal positive sentence. This is the same as for reporter yes and no questions. On the other hand, we don't usually need to backshift or change the tense of the verb, as we do with reporter questions. En este caso, cuando damos nuestra respuesta o hacemos nuestras yes no questions, podemos agregarle is para la situación de la que nosotros queremos conocer. Eh, we have this uh, situation called inversion. Vamos a ver lo que es la inversión en esto de las preguntas. Vamos a ver unos cuantos ejemplos de inversión. Um, I think we are going to see just two examples or something like that. Yes, no question. Or tenses with inversion. We have a, the verb tense that is the present simple with be. Simple, present simple with be. And we have here the direct question. Esta es una pregunta directa. And it says, is he Spanish? And the indirect question, said, can you tell me if he is Spanish? Aquí está la situación de lo que es la inversión. En... El present simple with be es cuando utilizamos el verbo to be para hacer nuestras oraciones. Tenemos esta pregunta que es como muy directa, muy directo al, al punto. Is he Spanish? ¿Es el español? ¿O es español? And in that case, it's just a di very direct question. Cuando la cambiamos, le agregamos can you tell me? Podría decirme que es la parte que lo va a hacer más eh, formal y más eh, respetuoso can you tell me y aquí es donde decíamos agregamos if a nuestra oración can you tell me if y luego tenemos esta parte que es como que estuviéramos escribiendo una oración en positivo can you tell me if he is Spanish podría decirme si él es español so in that case we have this inversion, but I'm going to write some other examples in the document later. So now it's time to end the session number four. Remember, this is the last day of this week, so we are going to see each other on Monday, the next 
Monday. Have a really good night and a really good weekend. And see you on Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. Good night.